Hello everyone, and we're back with another, you know, Benton AU thing, and uh, we got a different one today. Uh, well, different from the other two, but it's quite similar. Uh, you'll understand in a little bit. I already covered like two of them uh, already before. I'm pretty sure I have them in a, you know, in the Ben 10 playlist. So I'll have that in the description in case you want to go look at the other two uh, videos. Uh, but anyway, uh, let's talk about this one. So for one, uh, this video is going to be specifically about a Ben 10 AU uh, that was, you know, made by this guy. Uh, you know, so go to, you know, their Twitter and stuff. They make all of the art for this and they also have like little comics that they have of like Ben interacting with the aliens and so on and so forth. It, it's actually really nice and cute to uh, look at. Anyway, let's immediately go on to the actual AU itself. So, yeah. So, what exactly is the Charner Tricks specifically? Well, it is a combination of the Carnatrix and the Jacatrix. One was specifically made to kill all life, and one was kind of there to sort of preserve it, but in a completely different way. And when you combine them together, it makes, well, this thing. So, yeah, let's just go straight into what this thing specifically does. Now, let's go on to its actual properties and what it specifically does, and it's, um, yeah, it, it's a little weird. For one, just like the Jacatrix, uh, it essentially makes aliens determined uh, by the user. Uh, and the way it does this is that, like, a good example is Ben. With Ben, it changes them, obviously, into female, but it do, or does more than just, you know, changes their gender. It also determines your preferences as well. So, like, if Gwen, you know, put it on, not only would they be male, but they probably would look completely different than Ben's because it's all determined by what the person specifically likes and their preferences, so they probably wouldn't even look the same. Although the bad thing about it is, is that they essentially turn into beasts. Like, they're, they're not, most of them are not really that good, with the exception of, like, one or two or whatever that are actually kind of reasonable. Uh, I'll, I'll talk about them at, when we get to the alien part of this video. The aliens themselves are also able to be summoned outwards, similar to the Jacatrix uh, as well. So they'll be out and about along with the user, which in this case is pretty much not really good. And uh, lastly, the aliens themselves might be a little bit different than the actual, well, aliens due to certain things changing about them and, well, due to the preferences and stuff. So there, there might be, like, new abilities that the aliens wouldn't normally have, among other things, which I'll get into uh, next when we, you know, talk about the aliens themselves. I would go into the lore, but I think it'd be better if you actually went to their Twitter uh, and go specifically for more on the characters. Right now I'm just talking about the tricks itself, which, speaking of, let's uh, go to the aliens. First alien on our list is going to be Heat Blast, and oh boy, that's, uh, that's a no-no right there. Apparently Heat Blast, or this version of Heat Blast, is, well, uh, can get very jealous, for one, which, judging as they're supposed to be made out of fire, I don't think it's great to, uh, peeve them off, um, and also you can actually ease her anger or, you know, calm her down by literally just throwing water on her. We, we see this in a comic and stuff, and yeah, it works pretty well. Uh, if she gets mad, just throw some water on her, and she's, she's fine. For now, I guess, until she gets mad again. Next one is Wild Beast. Yes, Wild Beast, not Wild Mud. I like that little distinction. They have that a lot with a lot of these, you know, versions. She is, of course, very playful. I'm assuming just like a dog, as shown, again, in the, like, comics and stuff that um, they have made. Yeah, pretty, pretty much like a dog. Uh, yeah. 
Also, it's apparently noted that they are the closest, you know, more compatible or most compatible with human DNA, which doesn't it. I mean, yeah, but like, that's just, looking at the other ones, this just makes it feel weird, but I, it, I guess it's fine. And apparently has a resemblance to hyenas, which, you know, looking at, uh, looking at her, yeah, no, that, that, that makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. Next one is Stinkfly, and yeah, no, these are, these are not gonna get any better. We're just gonna get, like, those slow little dives of, oh, this one isn't that bad, and then back up to just, oh, man, I feel bad for Ben. Uh, anyways, apparently this thing can't fly, which I see as a good thing. Um, it gives you a way to get away from the damn thing, but a bad thing is that it can make, um, you know, special pheromones and that word which I don't really know how to say but it's the the liquid stuff that you know makes you horny so that's just nice he has to wear a gas mask whenever he uses this one that's just great also apparently it just doesn't stop watching which I don't know what that's supposed to mean I, I guess it's implying that it watches Ben as he sleeps which is just that just makes me uncomfortable just thinking about that I just Man, Ben needs needs a break, I swear. Next one is Snaro, and finally we got to one that's actually not really that bad, if I'm gonna be honest. So one thing that's about her is that, well, she's actually extremely meek, or relatively meek, or whatever. It's actually kind of cute when I think about it. So not really that bad. Her bandages also apparently have to be, like, you know, changed every so often. They don't give any more context, it's just, yeah, I don't know if it's like they get dirty or they get decomposed for some reason, I, I don't know. I'm assuming it's because of that light and stuff that you see coming out of her, but yeah. And lastly, she can't really modulate her words very well, which makes me just really sad for her, I just, yeah. This, this one is the one that, like, I really feel bad for. Next is Rip Jaws, and, uh, yep, yeah, Nightmare Fuel. Just, just what I wanted. Going immediately into the description, apparently um, it's got extreme predatory instincts, which when you look at them, including the face on top, yeah, no, that, that makes uh, incredible sense. Them having uh, incredible patience, or just you know, a good amount of patience, also is pretty accurate, uh, given their predatory instincts, and y y you, you know what I mean. And apparently says they're almost blind, so I don't know what to deal with that. I don't know if that's a good thing or not. Some of you, that might be a good thing. Some of you, like me, might think that's uh, it can be a bad thing. So uh, think of it as you will. I don't. I don't know. Next one is Buzz Shock, and uh, this one is just. How do you how do you even try to control this one? Like I'm completely confused. I mean, look at, I mean, it, like they literally it's literally said that it's difficult to control. Which if you look at it or her, yeah, no, I can I can see why. It has one arm, no arm or <laughs> one eye, no arms, and it's completely screwed up. I I, I mean, wow. It's also the main reason for something bad happen or something bad happening that I will talk about later, so, yeah. Anyway, she'll pretty much also bite anything that comes near her, or comes near her mouth, or whatever. Um, given that she is, you know, a Nosdenian, that's not very good. I, it's like, probably like getting tased, but like, worse. Next is Upchuck, and probably the least drastic change between, like, all of them, if I'm gonna be honest, but uh, I kind of feel bad for her, something happened to her tail. Anyway, she is the most confusing one out of all of this, because she has a extremely high appetite, which she's Upchuck, so that, that makes perfect sense, but what doesn't make sense is that she also doesn't like eating, so she would immediately throw up, which is good but also bad at the same time because she wants to eat but whenever she or she has to eat but whenever she actually eats she probably throws it back up I uh, this is just depressing next is upgrade and 
this one, this one right here, like, I want to throw hands with this one. So, for one, they're basically a Yandere, so that's... I mean, basically almost all of them are, with some exceptions. Like, all, all of them love Ben a lot, but to differing degrees. This one is just blatantly just, yeah, no, she's just, just a Yandere. She is also a, quite literally, a living virus. And the funny thing apart that uh, about that is, is that she's actually straight up malware. As in, like, literally and figuratively. We don't know what happened to actual malware. Uh, but to my knowledge, I think he's either doesn't exist or he is a good guy, maybe? I don't know. We we haven't gotten context on him just yet. Next is Forearms, and um, you know what? I don't I don't hate this one, but she's still pretty terrifying. Also, I, I don't know exactly why there's chains on her, because that... I don't... I don't know, maybe the Charnatrix is trying to protect him just a little bit but not too much i don't know i don't i don't understand it personally but apparently um she is extremely violent which might be pretty accurate if we're talking about it's supposed to be like you know hyper you know versions of the originals yeah no sounds pretty accurate i mean they're supposed to be a warrior race anyway so yeah makes sense but to counteract that, they are also apparently extremely naive, and if you look at the comic that uh, comes with this one, you literally see Ben do some Looney Tunes shit as it is like, look over there, and they actually look over and he runs away. It, it's funny. It's the funniest shit I've ever seen. Next is Accelerate, and um, a little weird, but I it's pretty good. I, I don't... I think it's nice. It also kind of looks like she has a um, gas mask on, which I... That's actually a nice touch. Uh, but anyway, going on to her, um, she's incre like, incredibly like hyperactive and all that, so she's like kind of like a little kid on crack, or I guess sugar, whatever. <laughs> uh, but apparently she also has a toxic competitive spirit, so I guess Ben can use that to his advantage to just get her to do shit. So, I, I guess she's an easy one to convince, besides, like, the actual nice ones. Next is this universe's version of Pesquitas, also known as Pescubus, which is actually an amazing name now that I think about it, because she's supposed to be a succubus, she's trying to seduce him, but, you know, still have that, like, beating part of her name or whatever, which also sounds like Pesk, or Pest, which, you know, might be pretty accurate to her. Anyway, apparently she's uh, greatly insistent on probably on a couple different things. Like she'll probably suggest something, Ben will shoot it down, but she'll keep insisting upon it and just go like, "Oh, come on, we can do it," or whatever, or you know what I mean. So, I mean that that could be annoying, but uh, I mean not that bad. And then she's actually incredibly obsessive, which go figure. Of course she is. Another Yandere to add to the bunch. And to top it all off, to make the you know, you know, <laughs> connections full, like a full circle, she's mentally unstable. Which, same, I guess. I'm, I'm not right in the head either, but she is just a whole different level. I mean, look at her. Just, I don't know. I don't want her anywhere near me. The next one is called Soundwave, which, I mean, look at them. You, you know why. Like, you know why they're called that. And also, the little ones that you see in front of it all obviously are called Echo Echo, you know. I mean, why not? Uh, apparently they are very, very much physically and mentally fragile, I guess. I mean, you gotta have some leeway with these guys, and if they're mentally fragile somehow, I guess you can, you know, woo them into getting you to do shit, I guess. Uh, they also have a hive mind, talking about the little echo echoes in front, they have a hive mind directly to Soundwave, essentially. Uh, which, you do actually see them fight in, a, you know, the connected comic with this, you know, this picture. Uh, and they attack Azmuth. But he survives. Go figure. Also, she can't- she doesn't do anything herself, she just sends her little minions out to, like, fight for her. Um, and because the hive mind, she has full control over them, so, 
Yeah. Next is Transmuter, which is, I think, a fan-made alien. And on their Twitter, I, I think it was act they actually show what the original alien looks like. So, again, plug for their Twitter. Uh, go over their Twitter and, you know, you, you can see it. I, I think there's also art of it. it it's called Transmuter. But, but, but anyway, uh, apparently they are really docile, which, out of all of them here, I wouldn't think this thing out of all of the previous aliens would be docile, but this could just be mainly due to, well, Ben 10,000 um, being able to, you know, make a lot of them work for him a lot easier because he has better control over the Charna tricks than young Ben. Uh, did, did I say this was a, an alien for Ben 10,000? I don't think I said that. Yeah, this is an alien for Ben 10,000. She is also incredibly obedient, which again, probably due to, you know, Ben 10,000 doing the things he does. Because he just gives them rewards, if you know what I mean. And there's also, she is this. Which I don't know what this means, but I'll probably put up a what it means on the screen uh, after I, like, when I'm editing this. So, yeah, there's, there's also that. Next is Grey Matter, and I do kind of like the aspect of her having like this brain bubble thing that's encased in glass. I, I, I think that's pretty interesting. I also really like her eyes as well. But anyway, uh, apparently she has a uh, very high superiority complex, which she's if she's anywhere close to this versions of a or this world's version of Azmuth. Yeah, nah, that that makes a lot of sense. Also, she's very sarcastic. Uh, and I'll say this like a hundred times, like the comics that's connected to this is just showcases it so well because she is incredibly sarcastic, especially to Azmuth, and I, I love it. Next we got uh, Ghost Freak, and yet again, <laughs> Ziscare is catching us stray because this is actually Ziscare. So second stray from the AU community so far, and um, yeah. I mean, I don't feel bad for him, but, you know, it's surprised this happened twice. Anyway, of course, because they are technically still Ziskair, um, they are manipulative, which, yeah, obviously, why wouldn't they be? It's just, if, if you know Ziskair, this, this makes perfect damn sense. I mean, he literally tried to, I think, take over, like, the planet that he was on, or whatever. He, he did some shady shit, is all I'm gonna say. Anyway, he's also, or she in this case, is incredibly sadistic, which, again, pretty accurate given this watch and just as a scare in general. So, yeah, no. Yeah, pretty accurate, I'd have to say. And the last alien that we're going to talk about, and my most favorite out of all of them, being Feedback. And I'm going to tell you all, go all you guys, she is the most tame out of all of them so far, and I'm pretty sure all of you can agree with me on that. Like, let's be honest. Anyway, um, she is apparently uh, extremely rude or whatever, which I'll take that over a bunch of the other ones. I mean, you know, there's only like a few that match her in terms of, you know, not wanting to kill Ben, although she probably wants to kill him for a different reason, if, if at all. And apparently, she is very raunchous. Uh, if you know what that means, then yeah. Uh, which, given her, yeah, yeah, I can see it. I, I can definitely see it. And let me guess, because this is uh, Ben's favorite alien, especially when he's a kid, I, I, I don't want to think about it. That's just weird. But I, I understand. She's also, also, from what I've seen from, like, the comics and from what we've seen from her she is very sassy and I, I like her I like her a lot before we go on to the end of the video I am first going to talk about two specific characters before we end it off that being uh, first Albedo now Albedo in this universe is actually a good guy like he's a good dude he even becomes a plumber uh, but sadly he has to deal with you know Azmuth he's kind of like his babysitter kind of and the reason behind this is because, well, he's a member of a species, he's incredibly smart, so he has to also kind of deal with whatever Azmuth has actually made that includes the Charnatrix. 
He does try to make a better version of the Charna tricks so that it, you know, doesn't harm Ben, aka the user and all that. Uh, so it can be, like, used for a lot better than what it is. But sadly, while it was getting, you know, charged by um, his Nodestidian transformation, yeah, he kind of, um, yeah, yeah, Albedo kind of mutated due to this and now is in extreme pain. So, I guess Albedo can't catch a break in all these universes either. I've, God. The last character we're going to talk about today is actually Ben 10,000. Yes, they actually have Ben 10,000 in here. Of course, this version of Ben 10,000 has, you know, full access to the China tricks, so, I mean, just like regular Ben 10,000. And because of this, he pretty much has control over, you know, the aliens themselves, although that's mainly due to him basically giving them rewards, uh, apparently. Which, given as the one of the previous aliens that I talked about earlier, about him having, I, I'm just gonna be honest, Future Ben, you know, this version of Ben 10,000, he's he feels like a creep. I, I he makes me uncomfortable as hell. I I don't know. It, I I hope you guys share my sentiment on this. But if you don't, meh. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much all I'm going to share about this little AU. Uh, I hope you guys like it. And again, go down uh, into the description. Uh, their Twitter is going to be down there. Uh, they have been making some, uh, you know, great, you know, Ben 10 stuff, but they also have other art that they make and other stuff, so yeah, go, go down there and check some stuff, uh, some of their stuff out. It's actually pretty interesting. And just before I go, I will be updating you guys on the Discord, um, and what's going on with that. Um, for one, I am trying to situate everything in there. I don't know exactly what I'm doing, but there will be more updates and we'll get that situated um, on Friday when the stream is happening. You guys can give me suggestions on, you know, like channels and stuff that should be in the Discord or whatever. Uh, and probably by the end of that stream, or maybe even before that, I might have everything situated before the stream. That's highly possible, but just in case it's not, uh, you guys can help me with, you know, making channels for it, uh, and I'll put them up, and then by the end of the stream, if it's not already up before the stream, it should be up afterwards. Um, it's gonna be a little scuffed, but, uh, you know, it will probably get better over time once we get more and more people, uh, you know, part of the server, and we'll have more people to help, so, yeah. And, uh, anyways, uh, I hope you guys liked the video, um... If you liked it, then we'll like it. Uh, and if you want to see more videos like this, go ahead and subscribe. And uh, yeah, that is all.